Yvette. Hello, Yvette. Am I saying that right? Is that, is, is that your name, Yvette? No? Yeah, that's, that's her name. You can call her Jennifer also. Jennifer? Mm. Hi, Jennifer. Are you there? I think she's trying to talk, but we can't hear her. We, we, we... We can't, we can't You're hear not you. audible. You're not audible, David. No. Okay. We, we should connect in a minute. I can. In, she's from, she's in Philippines. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So how about now? Hi, Jennifer. So is I, I am I audible now? Yes. yes. Yeah, we can hear you. So good morning there in with you, Gary, and good afternoon here with us, with Mohi in Asia. Okay. Uh, so, what, what do you do, uh, Jennifer? What, what what do you do in uh, in Asia as a professional? So, uh, I am a life coach, and I'm also doing workshop for students. So I'm here to learn a lot, really, because it is really up my alley. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for being here. Hello, Renato. Good morning, everybody. Okay. We've got a, we've got a great, we've got a lot of people here, so it must be a very interesting topic. Hi, Elena. Hi, Stuart. Hi, Mazzalina. Oh, God, sorry. Um, yeah, very interesting topic. We're, talking, we're going to be talking about managing emotions. You know, we're all very emotional people, but um, has a very major impact when, you, when you're dealing with other people, especially in, at work. Um, if I just, you know, my experience in emotions, managing my emotions as an entrepreneur, because I have, I've been running my business for over 20 years. And just a little nugget that I can share with you, and then we'll, we'll go into the, into the webinar, was how I thought I could hide my emotions. How I thought that what was ha happening inside of me was not visible outside. And uh, I, 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 would, I would pretend that I'm okay, but inside of me, these emotions were like, you know, just, I would just close myself, close myself into my office. So I'd come to my to, to the to the building to the off to the school, angry for whatever reason, whether it was traffic or whether it was the children or whether it was someone who phoned me on the way to to the to, to the to the building, come in, go into my office, close the door, and then wonder why people didn't want to talk to me. Because people would see me coming in, and you could see from the body language and the way I came in already my my state and so they didn't share information with me and so there was a lot of communication breakdown so i didn't get information because they thought i was angry i thought i was hiding it from them and so things happened <laughs> i blamed them they blamed me and it was just complete chaos so managing emotions at work in life is very important so today we've got Mohib. But Mohib is going to be our guest speaker, so he's just going to be just going with the flow, talking about this topic. Um, if you've got questions, we can we can ask questions, but we're going to give him the floor for like for 20, 25 minutes. And there's quite a few of us today, so we can even go into breakout rooms afterwards, around on the on the half hour. And uh, Mohib has got some questions, or even I've got a like a, a quiz on talk about emotions that we can do in pairs. And just to go a little bit deeper into the subject. And then we come back and we just share what we've understood about how to manage emotions uh, at life, in life or at work. Okay, so this is basically what we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to be here uh, spending an hour together. So hopefully, you know, we're going to get some value out of this and we're going to be listening to Mohib now. And perhaps you want to take, take over, Mohib, and just start uh, the ball rolling. Sure. Uh, thank you very much, Gary. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. Um, good to see a good turnout um, today. Uh, and and <laughs> thank you, Gary, for putting this up. And um, you know the work you're doing, uh, which is really 
admirable and you are at it every week um so so that's that's amazing uh emotions um so this is something that that i'm working on and uh, i i call myself the happiness coach and so i'm into emotions a lot and i get questioned a lot on what is this happiness so shallow and I say, well, happiness is the most ignored emotion. Uh, it's so ignored that they can't even figure it out where it is actually located in the brain. They found where the sadness is, where all the other emotions are, but they can't find where the happiness is. <laughs> so um, very interestingly, the one thing that almost every human being seek for cannot be located in your brain. <laughs> uh, that says a lot about how emotion, how, how much happiness is actually ignored. Um, so before I go into my happiness thing, uh, let's just overall see what, what do you understand by emotions? What, what is it to you? And, and what's the difference between him, emotions and feelings? or mood uh, have you ever thought about? Or do you, how many emotions can you even recognize? How many emotions can you say? Uh, some questions that we don't really ask ourselves. We do call ourselves emotional beings, um, but uh, we don't even question what is it that am I saying? Uh, what I'm calling an emotion, is it maybe just a mood? Is everything emotions? How can I differentiate? So I'm just doing questions. You guys can uh, raise hand and jump in and talk so it is not one-way traffic. It's uh, open for everyone to share and talk and so, so, so Mahi, give us a little definition. I mean, you, I mean, I understand mood as in a longer period of time, holding an emotion a bit longer. He's in a bad mood, we hear that expression. So that means I, it's like, uh, leave him alone. Um, so give us a little bit more, uh, some light on those emotions, feelings, mood. So, uh... Emotions, uh, so I think somebody made a comment. Emmeline said emotion is force of energy inside us. Okay. But again, that does not really explain much. You know, that actually makes people more confused. Uh, energy inside us, what does that mean? So emotions are things I'll be, I have some notes here, so if I'm looking down, so I'm, I'm reading from my notes. <laughs> so emotions are uh, automatic reactions. You don't really have much control over them. They are short-lived. Um, they come fast. They do not have a cognitive connection. They process cognitive process to it. Uh, it, it it's temporary. Um, and, and it's very common. We all have it. It comes like that and it leaves in that space, in that speed as well. But this, I'll, why it happens, I'll, I'll explain later. So this is basic emotions. This is also called primary emotions. So fast, temporary, you can feel it. You know, they say you blood, uh, blood boiling, or if you're angry, you can feel it on your body. So these are all emotions. So we have, that we have categorized six core basic emotions, which are the, the, the primary emotions, and then it goes into everything else. We have anger, happiness, surprise, disgust, fear, and sadness. These are the six core basic emotions that we all carry, but these are all primary emotions. So we, 
we have we we are reactive to primary emotions, but the actual cause of these primary emotions are the secondary emotions which we normally ignore, which are part of feelings. Feelings are uh, uh, require cognitive awareness. There is a thought process that goes into it. Uh, requires awareness of the environment, aware um, awareness of emotion, and have a thought connected to it. It is long lasting. Um, and feelings are said to be collection of unattended emotions. Hmm. So let me, let me ask a question and just to keep the conversation going. So it's please, not just please. a monologue, but it's a dialogue. But anyone else can jump in as well. Okay. So um, so feelings are not sensations because we, we're trying to understand sometimes as well these emotions when they come along. I don't know if I get like triggered or hijacked, as they say, like when the emotion comes in and you're taken away and you just explode. I, I want to know how can I understand that's happened to me and maybe understanding before I actually explode, because that would be helpful. Okay, so why we do what we do? You might have heard me say this many times. So we are uh, meaning-making machines. When we are born from a very young age, we see things, we experience things, we observe things, and we, form, we give them a meaning and we form beliefs. So now, we are since we are cognitively biased we confirm these beliefs and we only see what we want to see and now since these beliefs are getting confirmed it becomes into behaviors and then behaviors turn into habits and habits become into identity so Every time you are reacting to something, you see an event, you give it a meaning, and based on that interpretation, you, you, you react, you just jump into it. For so example. You, so, so are emotions reactions? Yeah, automatic reactions. Your automatic reactions, for example, you're driving and somebody honks. Come behind you and, and honks. Bah! Most of us, even at one time, I would go furious. I would block the guy even more. I would raise the guy. <laughs> I would be feeling angry. You know, there's a lot of road rage happens and all that because of how I'm interpreting what that person did. So which, which could be, in, give us an example. What, what which you... could be, uh, first of all, he shouldn't, my uh, model operator, huh? he shouldn't honk like that. Why is he honking? There's a road jam. Where will he go? This is rude. This is wrong. So all these model operators are not meeting by that honking that he's doing. So I'm, I'm interpreting that event, that act as a something wrong, something bad, something that should not have been happening. I do not know the backstory of what's happening with that person, but I've interpreted that this is wrong. So I'm getting, so now my reaction for something that is wrong is me getting furious like that. Mm -hmm. Or it can even be that I am being disrespected. So, so in, 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 in a work in environment, how could that in be In a work environment, for example, yeah. right? So in a work environment, um, you're talking to your colleague and there is a conversation. Okay, I'll give you a live example. I was having a conversation with a colleague. Uh, my manager came into this conversation and he did not know the context of the whole thing. And I was the senior, the other uh, 
co colleague of mine was a junior. I was explaining something to him and he jumped into this. And as I was trying to explain to him what it, what, what's happening, he told me, shh. And I did not take that lightly. I got furious. I shouted at him and I took a, a calculator which was in my hand and I banged it on the table and I left the office. Within 30 seconds, the whole thing happened. Hmm. So, he could have done things differently. I could have done things differently. Right? But my reaction was worse than what he, he did because it was loud. It was in, on the floor. It, people could see. And so I, even though I think that he was wrong to do what he did, but my reaction did not help anybody. What, what could you have done differently in that situation? I could have asked him, like, you know, uh, why are you doing this? You know, do you, do you need to be doing? Or maybe I should have stopped and listened. Why is he doing this? What is he trying to understand that I'm not able? I'm not. I'm not able to deliver. That he's asking me to to be quiet and listen to the other person. So, so what stopped you asking those questions? Because I, that action was a trigger for me, that I'm being, because I think I'm the senior, I should be heard, you know, I can explain better, or this is the wrong way to be telling someone to do something like this. Uh, so a lot of things not meeting, and so all my model operators shouldn't, couldn't, you know, all those were hit at the same time. And for me as a defense mechanism, I went into the uh, fight mode and I reacted with that. So we all have set things of things on how we react towards things, you know, you go fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, and then you have your actions that shows your reaction to the thing. So some people keep quiet, some people go loud, some people freeze, some people go into pleasing. So in work environment, like you said that you come in the morning and you are already in a bad mood. So your, your, your body gesture, the way you walk into the room, the way you talk, the way you say something, the way you're holding your, your facial expressions and all that is already showing everybody like, okay, boss is not in a good mood. Uh, but how you're feeling, the mood you're in has nothing to do with work. You, you, may, you may most probably are just pissed off with the traffic you were stuck in for the last hour. Or maybe some guy honked at you. Or, I don't know, something at home. So, but now you're bringing one problem from one area of your life into another area of your life. And then you're just being, you're just sitting in it. Not realizing how it's affecting anybody else. I think Lee's got a question for you. Lee. Hi, Lee. I'm Habib. Um, yeah, thank you for that, uh, Gary. So one of the things that really resonates with me and you were saying is one the honk, honking of the horn. So do, the, do, do these reactions that we have, do you believe that they're based on learned beliefs that we've, we've previously had? Um, how does that fit with it? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so, so that's that's why I said why we do what we do is based on, uh, you know, beliefs that we have formed and 
um, behaviors that we have had and habits, and then now it we we call this see see it as an identity, and then now we are without question we are just being reactive, and then we always think we are right, uh, regardless of how it is seen. We our our answer is always no, but even we are agreeing to someone, we start with no, but. And, but then we also have a, a primitive mind, which is preset with all these uh, way of things done uh, from the primitive man, the first man, how they, so all these fight, flight, freeze and fawn states are embedded. Now the sensations we give are the same as when the primitive man did. So our mind thinks that we are under attack. So our reactions to it is the same. The thing is, emotions are here to protect us. But we end up fighting our emotions. So, so, so we just, just before we get to Stuart, because Stuart's got a question for you as well. So you, you're saying that uh, if our fight or flight mode is activated in a business in a in a work context because I'm still trying, trying to keep it on the work context as well. That's just not leading to collaboration. Is is leading to disconnection. What what, what, what does that mean? Absolutely. We, Look, if I come to the office, if I come every day to the office with this with this face, I'm blocking everybody from talking to me, approaching me, and then I'm being labeled by different people in different way. If I'm reactive to everything anybody says, okay, Rashmi, okay, I'll, I'll get to you, Rashmi. Um, um, how, how I react, like you say something like, no, 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 don't talk to me like that. Oh, no, no, don't do like this. Oh, don't do like that. And if I'm in, a, in, in this, manner with everyone, then I'm destroying relationships. Then I'm not workable. I'm not even, I'm, I'm actually making the work environment so conducive that most probably I might be put into a disciplinary action and asked to leave. All right, Stuart, you got a question, Stuart, from me? Hi, uh, Muhir. Hi, okay. Stuart. Long time no see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so thank you. Re really interesting um, beginning to the discussion. Um, I think I've got two, 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 two questions, which I think are related. Um, so I'm in a work context. So I can think back to my to three years ago when I was in the corporate world, and I would just meander my way through a business day, and I will assert that I was emotionless. So those six primary emotions, I believe that at no time during a, a, let's call it a normal business day, I had any emotion coming up to the surface. And I just wanted to explore whether you believe that to be true or whether you think that we have emotions all the time, but they're just kind of under the surface. And related to that, if I'm in my normal kind of tinkering along business day and something happens where somebody says to you like that and you explode, does that cause some level of uh, brainwave cycle activity, which is different from a normal state. Okay, so the emotions are always there, right? It's different people in different contexts um, on, on how they carry it, how they show it, how they suppress it. And, how, and some people just stay so invisible they come and go, nothing, nothing affects them or they just stay in that space. It doesn't mean that they don't feel anything or they don't see anything or, uh, or it, nothing affects them. It's just that mm, they don't react to them in that specific manner, which can be uh, again from a space of fear. From a space of 
from a space of uh, how how do I say? Um, or, or a fear, yeah, basically fear, but within fear of anything. It can be fear of seen in a different way. Uh, it can be um, fear of losing their job if they say something, um, or or they just don't want to be in that limelight because maybe they think they will uh, they will be found out uh, that falls under uh, uh, our thinking of me not being good enough. Mm. So there's a question is a, a question here, Emily. Uh, Emily's put in Moib about suppressing emotions, and it's actually what I was thinking as well. I was actually just reflecting of my uh, my favorite tennis player, Roger Federer. No, and when you see him, wait, well, he's retired now. But when you saw him on court, he was the Ice Man, and there were so many emotions I can imagine going through someone playing three or four, five hours of tennis of a, a missed ball or a double fault or whatever, yet he was so outwardly calm. So what happens with these emotions? I mean, do we express them? Do we break a racket? Do we shout? Do we, do we don't do anything? We suppress them? How do, what do we do with them? How can we so, deal with that? So, so in tennis, if we, now we're talking about tennis, you have certain, you know, your Iceman doesn't mean he doesn't shout. He does, he does his shouting or he, you know, when he's hitting the, oh, oh, you know, he's, he's taking, he's showing some emotion there. It's not that he's not showing any emotions. Maybe he doesn't break the racket like some people. Maybe he's not confrontational with the umpire like some, like some, some of the players. Um, uh, like my favorite tennis players, like Pete, Pete Sam, Sampras. Uh, for me, he was the coolest ever. He, I never saw him ang show any emotions. He was just chilled out at all times. But in that flow state, when they go into that environment, they most probably have some other rituals before and after the game where they go and then they, they release uh, their emotions. They Maybe they have coaches that they talk to so, so is, this they, what, is, is this what we need to do to manage our emotions in the workplace I absolutely work? then the, you we all need to find our own thing like so, okay some people they go to the gym some people they go uh, you know the healthy habits and then some people go for drinks or some people take smoke breaks and some people uh, you know, they they actually have people to talk to. So there are different. You need to find what is your thing. What will what brings you peace of mind and helps you understand what's happening with you, and why. And and, and also, the best thing is yourself. You need to understand why are you this emotional. How are you interpreting the events? in your life that these emotions are keep on flaring up <laughs> it's a good, yeah. uh rashmi's got a question she's got a hand up let's listen to rashmi what was your question rashmi i think oh yeah yeah actually i just wanted right. to ask about the like you talk to the cognitive process the thought process about emotions is the first thing what if somebody just learns to ignore emotional part of any conversation anything that is happening in the office workplace just because uh, to be at peace so is it what you call it it is the suppression i don't think so it is the suppressed emotion because we are not at all thinking about there was something emotional into that uh, you know this was my occurring to my mind that uh, what this situation is called and how we can use it is it possible to do that so see the thing is if you are ignoring something you are avoiding something it's not that you're not thinking about it okay it's still there unless it's something that doesn't come back you know there are some things which does not require that kind of attention 
or um, it, it is something you can pass to someone else to manage, um, uh, or if, it, if it's directly on you and you're ignoring it, over time, it will become something. Because if if it's if 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 you see it on daily basis, you go and I say it's nothing, it's nothing, it's nothing, then you are actually suppressing. It's like a, a, it's you're you're procrastinating till that thing blows up. Okay, so that means that uh, it it is not any process. There is no process that we can learn where we are not get impacted by like you know our thought process can we train our mind to that ways that at, at least for workplace nothing will uh, come back so, to me. okay so when I, I i in my trainings when i do in, in in office that i work with my staff i always suggest the eyes and our matrix to manage your work so eyes and our matrix you identify you know, because it's all work, what is important, what's urgent, what's important, but not urgent, what is not urgent and not important. Um, and what, what was it? What is urgent, but not important. And what is not urgent and not important. So when you look into your work and you because now we are specifically talking about work. So what, what are you doing with all this? What is making you so emotional? How are you seeing it that it's, it's emotional? Is it urgent? Is it impo important? Is it something that you need to be doing or you're just taking on other people's work? Is it even due right now that you're worrying so much about it? If it's, it's, if it's due next month, do you need to be even be worrying about it? Why do you have all your work is under urgent and important? Because most of the time that we load things out on our head at work saying everything is urgent and important and I don't have time. So, so are we saying that like every time you're triggered or an emotion comes up, it's some sort of self-reflection questioning that you should be doing? Expectations expectations you see that that the breakup of expectations because towards everything we have expectations so if i want like i'm working on something and i don't want to be disturbed and somebody brings something to me which is even good for me but i interpret that as as uh, as disturbance and I'll blame the whole thing on that person. Hmm. So now I'm all emotional. Ah, my work is all this thing. It has nothing to do with your work, but then I'm interpreting like that. Now I'm just... So expectation towards yourself, expectation towards others, and then how you're managing yourself. Then some of these things are just pure habitual, but we are not seeing it. Oh, I'm a morning person. Oh, my, I don't like Mondays. Oh, what is this? Oh, no. But when you are, when, when, when there's a public holiday on a Monday, you, you, you're the same on Tuesday. But other weeks you're okay on Tuesday, but Monday you have a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's a public holiday. Oh, so oh, listen, so what we say to ourselves, how we say it. You, yes. you, could, you could talk for hours. I'm sure we could go on talking for we hours. We have some other questions here. But, but what, I, what I want to do is I want to put people into breakout rooms because I find that within this, this is the format I'd like to do as well. Is So get everyone the chance to actually talk and listen and ask questions to each other. So what I would do is now put some uh, put everyone into breakout rooms. I think there's about there's 12 of us. So we can actually have six rooms. And we'll put two people in each room. We'll have 10, 15 minutes. It's now, it's 35 past the hour. So let's say we'll be back in, back into the main room, like at 10 to the hour. So we have 15 minutes. And then when we come back 10, 10 to the hour, then we can just share what, we, what we've taken, what, we, what we're going to take away from this hour spent together. 
Okay. Um, those questions, Mohib, do you have them? Can we, or shall I put the quiz that I've, I found or something? Let me you just... can just put your quiz, no problem. Yeah, one minute, one minute. Let me find... But there are some interesting questions here later. I think it would be good if we can just... Uh, okay, one minute. I'll, touch I'll, touch I'll... with them afterwards. I'll put this into the, into the chat. Elena, uh, who has Maslina? Uh, we, we, after we come back, then I'll attend to your questions, okay? Okay, brilliant. So, can everyone see the, the quiz that, uh, in the chat? Everyone, can you just look in the chat? No, it's not there? No, it's not here. Oh, uh, why not? <laughs> it's showing me it's here. Um, why is that? I put it... It's in the input box and can be uploaded again. Oh, okay, but it's... Is everyone, have, is, have we got it? No? Mm. No, still not here. All right, let me, let me try and put that back in again, one minute. Let's see, now? Yes. Brilliant, okay. So we're going to go into breakout rooms, and then uh, I see even Helena who's put a question there. Yeah, uh, Helena. these questions we'll look at it when we come back. We'll have like ten minutes at the end to have a look at those questions. Okay, so let's go into breakout rooms and spend some time just going over some of these questions and try and enjoy the topic. Okay, so let me go into breakout rooms. One minute. Breakout rooms. I'm going to make six of these. And then I'll jump into the rooms just to make sure everyone's in the right place. Hey, Hello. Hi. You, you, Hi. Everyone's going into breakout rooms. Should I put you into a breakout room? So you uh, uh, yes? Okay. All right. All right. Just give me two minutes. I'm in my phone and I need to shift to my laptop. Okay. Okay. Then. Right. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Thanks. Joining. Thanks. Okay.
I think not many people have come back. Yeah, we just wait for the rest. Are you all back here? Hello, who's here? Let's see. Oh, Rafi, yeah. Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, yeah, we are here. Where are you phoning from? I'm staying in Malaysia. Malaysia. Uh, my originally from Myanmar. From? Myanmar, Burma. Burma. Myanmar. Oh, wow. Never been there before. So hey. Malaysia, I think even Mohib lives in Malaysia. Uh, if I'm yeah. not wrong. Yes. Well, th thank you as well. Rashmi is running from India, I think. Oh, it's not. Where? Yeah. I must come to India sometime. We have to organize. Uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> you all, everyone is always invited. <laughs> Well, I'm going. I'm going to London next week, so I'm going to meet some some ecology coaches in a, in London next week. So that's going to be fun. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. It's always fun <laughs> to meet yeah. ecology people. <laughs> it's fun meeting people in a in the live, face to face, and not through a through yeah, a screen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's true. <laughs> so I'm looking. I'm looking forward to that next week. They've got that. I think five people are coming together, five coaches in London. Oh, wow. That's going to be fun. So yeah. Is there some official tour? Hi, Paul. No, no, it's not an official meeting. It's Hi, Mohib. Well, oh, Paul, nice to see you after such a long time. How are you? Yeah, I'm you. I'm good, Rashmi. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. All right. Welcome back. I think let's just keep things like this so we can all see each other. Yeah. Um, okay, just now, uh, Gary came into our room and he said that there was a bit of a talk about active listening. Right? Active listening that can help at work and all that. So before you get sit down and listen to other people, or where do you start active listening? Self. Are you actively listening to yourself? Do you know what is your own inner dialogues with yourself? What do you wake up to? What do you sleep to at night? Do you ever notice why do you are you these emotions? Why are you feeling these emotions? What are they trying to tell you? So one of the questions, there were some questions there. Questions of God. Okay, all the chats from previous one is gone. So you have to write your questions again. <laughs> Marzalina oh, well, and Helena. I, I, I think Helena had a question. Helena, do you want to tell us, tell us the question that you had? Yeah. The question was, uh, was a general one in a sense because the, the talk we were, uh, it, was, it followed the conversation that we were having and it was kind of just, so what are your suggestions on how we can manage those emoti emotions in the workplace, especially those burst of emotions that we, we we feel we need to react so how do we manage those moments in the workplace and and kind of how because with with your explanation of how to manage and perhaps we can understand the difference between managing and suppressing which is completely different yeah thank you okay uh, thank you very much helena uh, this is really important so since these are automatic these happens so you will feel it there is no way, no running away. So you, and then you can't control it. So there's no controlling of emotions. You know, there's a lot of talk, control your emotions, control your emotions. You can't control your emotions. You can manage your emotions. So when you feel it, take a step. First, you be mindful of what's happening to you. So this is where active listening comes in. You're listening to yourself now. So what's happening to you? Four things you can actually start noticing. What's your thought? What's your behavior? What's the emotion? And where do you feel it on your body? Because it comes with pain. These emotions come with pain in different parts of the body. Your head hurts, your neck hurts, your shoulder hurts, your back hurts, your knees hurt. Where does it hurt? So this is called the cross bun uh, model. Behavior emotion, 
um, your thoughts and where do you feel it physically on your body? So when you say behavior, you mean action? Yeah, what do you do? Okay. Right? You can only correct things once when you come to realization of it. Right? And okay, so, then, so Mahib, give, give us a, a, a process of this, like how, for example, I, I'm, I'm just trying to think of how we, you know, where it all begins and then we're triggered and then what, 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 what how does that, just give us the, the process. Okay. Um, we are, I'm given, I think I'm overworked. Okay. So that's a thought. I, and I, and maybe I am because I'm disorganized and I have a lot of work. Everything is urgent. Everything is important. I cannot, you know, put it in the proper places. So my, I have a pile of work. And my colleague comes in and gives me something. Okay. And I'm like, oh, this, this, oh, this, this. look at all this work. Okay. Right? So that's, that's the action. So this is my behavior. My thought is I'm overworked. Okay. My emotion can be anger, frustration, anything. The thing is, I get I show temperament, so I'm most probably say, sh showing anger. I'm calling it anger. Okay? But then we are not angry, we are frustrated, we are annoyed, we are a whole lot of other things, but we are not seeing all that. We are only seeing anger. And... And, and then you have the feeling. Then you can feel it on your body. It will. You will feel it on your body. Uh, my shoulders hurting. My body is hurting. It it shows up somewhere. Okay. Okay. Another thing also can happen that you can sit down and you start crying, or you just hold your head and you don't say anything. So you're going into different, uh, you know, state, response state. So it depends on how you are. I most probably would be like that shouting, yelling one. Someone else most probably will just keep quiet. They will just freeze. Some people will, uh, you know, uh, go into uh, flight mode. And some people will go into spawning. They will just do, they will just try to please the abuser. So, these are the things that you can be mindful of. These four things. And okay. the biggest thing, don't forget to breathe. When you breathe, you create space between your thought and your reaction. Because your thought and your reaction is like, you, 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 you jump onto it. But when you feel the sensation, you, now you're creating space you're a magdala, which is going into like uh, 200 kilometer per hour by breathing, you're slowing it down and you're creating space between your mind, your thought and your reaction to allow yourself to uh, evaluate the whole situation furthermore and change your interpretation of the event. Brilliant. Listen, loads of stuff here. We've got loads. We're, gonna, we're coming to the end. So I want to I want to finish on time so people have, have got to go through. So Mahib, thank you very, very much for your contribution, your time, and all the, your, the knowledge that you brought here. Um, Gary, there was one question from Madlina I missed. If you allow this one question. Go on. Okay, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My question is, how do you define your emotion, whether during that state, uh, is uh, your normal or is it is impulsive? You know, how do you so define that's it? That's where the, the, okay. So then this, I have answered your question. You just do the four thing, and mm -hmm. then you the emotional literacy. See, it's emotional literacy, emotional intelligence, self awareness. So emotional literacy, you sit down and you find out what is happening. What emotions are you naming? Or is it the right emotion that you're naming? If it's anger, it's actually anger. If it's frustration, annoyance, then you're just being annoyed. You're not angry. Why do you need to be temperamental about something? Why do you need to show anger if you're frustrated? You'll be frustrated. If you're annoyed, you'll be annoyed. 
That's all. Thank you. Sorry, Gary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's, it's having the vocabulary to actually express the emotion that you have. And we go very easily to anger and sadness and so on. Uh, Emily, I know you've got a question as well, but <laughs> we go. Um, more, um, just um, can you just repeat those four or five things you were telling us? Your behavior, your emotion, your oh, thoughts. Uh, not of course, right? not of course, not of course. Behavior. Behavior, <laughs> thought. Behavior, and then? Your thought. Your thought. And then? Your emotion. Your emotion. And where do you feel it physically on your body? Okay, the physical sense of it. Now, is there any map um, some guru has, though, to link uh, the physical things and where the body was, what's the possible you will, you, as, uh, for you First, you identify these things, then you will start seeing how in different, different behaviors, different thoughts, different uh, things, you will start feeling like, oh, oh, when I'm angry, I get a headache. When I'm sad, my shoulders hurt. You will start seeing all that. Oh, you you two connect up and talk about this. Yeah, in, connect in, with in me and I'll answer all your questions. Okay, listen, listen. Let, let me let me close up. Let's, let me close up. So, listen. If you've had, if you enjoyed this session, you've had, you found some value. When you see the be well, because I'm going to be running this every Tuesday, share it with your friends and get it out there. Let's spread the news because it's it's a freebie. It's an hour together to actually get some insights into business but also in the emotional well-being of running a business but also being in life today we talked about emotional in managing emotions in work in the workplace and in life next week there's no um be well because i'm going to be in london meeting other coaches we've we've organized a get together so if anyone's in london you want to come along just drop me a line i'll tell you where we're going to be meeting and so that's going to be on tuesday so i'm not around i'm not going to do that but online However, the next one we have is on the 7th of February. 7th of February is a Tuesday. And we're going to have Stuart Foster, who's now gone, talking about burnout. As he is a burnout coach and he knows what it means and how to actually uh, see the signs before we get burnout. I, had, I went through the burnout syndrome. And I think anyone who's run a business you know, for a while has probably come in contact with this. So Stuart's going to be talking about this on the 7th of February. Again, I'll put the link in on LinkedIn. You guys can share it. And if you find value, put a comment or whatever it is. Okay. So thank you for being here. Thank you for coming. And if, if you want to meet among, you know, if you, like Emily, if you want more information about managing emotions, you can contact Mohib directly. Mohib, thank you very much for your time. And thank you, Gary. Great, thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Speak to you soon. Thank bye. You all. Bye. Thank bye you, everyone. Gary. Thank you. Thank you, Mohib. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Mohib. Mr. Gary. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.